Hey, I'm David, and I recently made a movie called The Wait, and I'm going to go over some of the effects from the opening sequence. So first thing first, let's watch the opening sequence. Okay, so now let's get to the actual stuff. In order to do this kind of effect, we have three things that we're going to do. We're going to add a gradient overlay, we're going to add a soft blur overlay, and we're going to go and make that double image effect. So here I've got Premiere Pro open, and I'm just going to drag into the timeline uh, a little clip from the video. It's just this one of the hand picking up a phone. So first things first, gradient overlay. You'll notice that this here is a it's kind of gray looking and dull. And this is because when I make videos these days, I add a gradient overlay to bring out the colors. So uh, there's probably a better way of doing this, but in Premiere Pro I tend to just make a title, just default still, um, and I use that to make my gradients. So just here in the title editor, going to the rectangle tool, I'm just going to draw a rectangle. And in the fill type, I'm going to change it from solid to linear gradient. And then this is where you get to uh, double click on these little sliders to select the colors to make your gradient. Now, think Instagram, you know, cross process look. I'm going to go from green to purple. There we go. That looks good. So now that we have this, this title, I'm just going to add it above our video track. And right now, it completely blocks out the video. That is not what we want, so I'm going to click on this title and go to its effect controls. Under Opacity, here's where we have Blend Mode. And I'm going to change the Blend Mode from Normal to Overlay. There's a bunch of different Blend Modes that you can try out and see which one looks best for uh, your specific needs. Um, I'm going to go for Overlay with uh, an Opacity of maybe 70-something percent here. By the way, make sure that for your opacity on your gradient, you don't make it animated. Because, you know, it's just not something you need for this. So that looks nice. Um, for a little bonus effect on the on the overlay, we're going to add some noise. Not a whole lot of noise, but just enough that it adds a bit of subtle texture. So I'm just putting it on maybe 10%. There we go. Actually, that's a little bit too much. I'm going to bring it down to 6. There. Very good. So next thing on our list is the soft blur overlay. The colors right now along the edges are... Like, these are hard lines. We want to soften it up because this is a dream sequence. Not dream. It's supposed to look trippy, and right now it looks too real. So what we do for this is we're going to double the video track. So I'm going to copy this one. And... Paste it above the original, still underneath the gradient. On this track here, we're going to add a blur. Uh, I'm going to go for a fast blur. A Gaussian blur looks better, but for the sake of this tutorial, we want to see the results immediately. It doesn't have to be too blurry. 20 is good enough. And after this, under the, uh, the blend mode, we can try setting it to something else like overlay sometimes works, it makes the, the dark colors on the phone look muddy here, so I'm just going to go for soft light. So now you'll notice that, especially um, with bright colors, there's a bit of a halo effect around the edge. It just makes it uh, a little bit fuzzier and a little less real looking. And that's what we're going for here, so that's good. And the last thing is the double image. So on our bottom layer, I'm going to add an offset effect. By the way, each time I'm just using the search the search bar in the effects toolbar. I'm going to add it to the video. Uh, the thing that makes this look especially trippy is that the offset moves. So where it says Shift Center 2, I'm going to uh, select this little stopwatch thing to turn animation on. So we're going to start off by shifting the center 
to the left a little and up a little. Now I'm going to bring the slider all the way to the end and I'm going to shift it to the right and down. So that looks good. Now we want to blend it with the original. So I'm going to bring that to maybe 40%. That might be a little bit extreme. I'm going to bring it down to 80 so that it's mostly the, uh, the correctly positioned one. There we go. Perfect. So that's that effect. But this is using a separate program. We're using Premiere Pro here. And a lot of the time, people don't want to get out of their animation program and export things and mix them in a different program. So that is where Toon Boom really starts to shine. So I'm going to open up Toon Boom Animate. Uh, actually, Animate Pro specifically, because Animate Pro is what has the, uh, the network editor. So I'm going to show you that in a sec. Okay, here we go. So here's a scene from my animation. You may recognize it. It's a scene where uh, the main guy gets a phone call. So now I'm going to show you the network over here. This came from Flash. I imported it to Toon Boom from Flash. So that's why we've got this global Flash peg. But um, you'll notice that all of these little layers here correspond uh, to a node in this network. It looks really confusing at first because there's a lot of things going on, but basically what it is is it's showing you the order that things are done in when it's being rendered. So a composite means it sticks together a bunch of the assets above. These are all the different layers. Um, these green things are pegs. It's like tweens in Toon Boom. And... Uh, the composite draws to the display and also to write, so when you export a file, it'll write to it. And now you have the module library, which is where you have all kinds of different filters that you can do right in Toon Boom. First thing I'm going to do is, off in the corner here, I'm going to set it to render view, so that we can see these effects. Before we write to the display, we are going to add some effects to this composite, so we don't want the composite going directly to display and write. So, in the meantime, I'm going to grab another composite, which is over here. And I'm going to make this composite go down to this one before going to display and then going to write. So that in between this and this, we can add our cool effects. The farther to the right things are, that means the farther behind. So, like, this layer goes below this layer, for example. So if I want to add uh, a blurred copy of this image on top of itself to give the soft glow effect, I can add a second one here. Except right now nothing new is being added, so I'm going to add a radial blur. So now we've got the composite going directly into this new composite, and then on top of that, it's blurring itself and going here. Right now there's no blur. If you click this little box, it's because the blur radius is zero. So I'm going to bring that up. See how that looks. Looking good. Okay. And now we want to send our, our blend mode. So we've got that too. There's a blending module. So I'm going to stick that in there. And if I go to the settings for this blending module, I'm going to set the blend mode to overlay. And I'm also going to set the SWF blend mode to overlay as well, even though we're not going to be exporting one. So that's, uh, that's starting to look good. But it looks a little too intense, so I'm going to add a transparency node as well. And I'm going to set this transparency to around 75%. Yeah, that's good. And now, lastly, we can add that gradient overlay. 
So we can grab the gradient module and stick it into this composite. Let's go to the settings. That's a gross gradient, so we're going to make our cool hipster one. There's your green. And here is our purple. And just like before, we're going to add another uh, another blending module. Set this one to overlay. And now we're rolling. That looks pretty nice now. Oops. The only thing about um, adding all these effects right in Toon Boom is that uh, it takes a little while to render them. So if you look at it just in um, the OpenGL view, you notice that you know, the gradient, you can't see through it, so it's best to not view that layer while you're editing. And so you just do all your compositing afterwards. But if you do it afterwards, you should be fine. So hopefully this was useful to someone. Uh, I'm going to end with another terrible joke, because I'm going to make this a habit. So the sausage maker accidentally backs into his meat grinder. He got a little behind in his work. Anyway, talk to you next time.